I'm so heartbroken about America. I'm so heartbroken about Canada. So heartbroken. Listen to me, beloved of the Lord. It's going to take every single one of you. Every, and more. And more than we have. We've got to multiply. We've got to be thousands. And we've got to be hundreds of thousands. Same for Nigeria, Obi. We've got to be hundreds of thousands for Africa. We've got to be hundreds of thousands. We have got to increase. And we have got to multiply. And I am prophesying tonight that Esther 414 movement, that movement for such a time as this, that movement has been birthed. But out of Tennessee, the volunteer state, there is a reason that we are here in the volunteer state because God is going to cause a volunteer army to arise and Tennessee is going to be a model state that shakes this nation says the Lord stand to your feet I want to read two passages of scripture to you if we could have the keyboard player come when I was resisting the call of God and I was telling the Lord he was calling me to go to go preach the gospel go to the nations I was having visions of stadiums I was preaching in which all has happened and the Lord said will you go and I said I will not lay my children on the altar of any ministry they were two and five I said no I'm not going. Find yourself someone else. And one night, late at night, I was up. Praying. I said, Lord, why do you need me, a woman? Can't you find a few men? I said, it would be so much easier on them than on me. I lived in a very macho state of Texas. <laughs> and he said, so my prophecy can be fulfilled. And I said, which one is that? And he said that in the end times I will pour out my spirit upon my sons and daughters and if I'm going to pour out my spirit on some daughters I need some and I'm calling you I was so afraid my children wouldn't feel that I love them Actually, one of my worst fears came true because when my daughter was five, her Christian school teacher pulled her aside and said, your mother doesn't love you. Because once a month I was traveling somewhere and she came home and told me that. My teacher says, you don't love me, mommy. My Christian, child's Christian school teacher. My worst fear. It triggered something in me that was so deep even to this day to say it. I don't have words. Mike came home from the office that day. I opened the door. I was crying. We didn't have waterproof mascara in those days. <laughs> I was a mess. And I said to Mike, open the door. I mean, he, you know, he had his nice little briefcase, his suit and tie in those days. And I said, I'm quitting the ministry. And he was shocked, you know, so he got some Kleenex, gave it to me. I tried to reassemble myself. And you know, women, have you ever noticed when we get real emotional, we get real squeaky. And you know, I was going on. Yeah, the, the husbands have to have interpretation, you know. So we got in this fight. And I told Mike, I'm quitting the ministry. And he said, you're not. And I said, I am. And he said, you're not. And I said, I am. And he won. 
thank God for that man. 50 years we've been married this year. We're having a re-wedding with a wedding gown and everything in August. <laughs> and God gave me this word. Marks 10, 29 and 30. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who's left house or brothers or sisters, father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters, mothers, children and lands with persecution and the age to come eternal life. He gave me Matthew 6, 24 through 27. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the challenge you tonight. Who will lose your life? Who will take up the cross? No matter what it cost, no matter what people say, no matter whatever the price, even if it should mean your life, sometimes I'd walk out the door and go to a dangerous country and I'd write a new will and I'd leave it in the drawer of the house in case I never came home, kiss the children goodbye and walk out the door because I didn't know it was so dangerous if I'd ever see them again. In those days, many times I traveled by myself. People say, what does it cost you? I just have to say, everything. But then, I say, but what have I gained? Everything. Everything. So I'm going to invite some of you. I know we don't have a lot of room. Some might want to come to the front. I'm going to ask you to give everything right now. I'm going to ask you who would take up the cross for America. It would take up the cross to be a voice or Canada or whatever nation. You know, maybe God's called you to a foreign field. And the Lord is saying, who shall I send? And who will go? Who shall I send? No matter what it costs you. Fortune lands. There's a commissioning I would like to give this evening. I'm going to give it to those watching by streaming too. This is a serious thing. This is a sobering thing. But it's glorious. It's so glorious. It's so glorious when the Moravians would go many, and, and other missionaries, Swedish missionaries, they would pack their belongings in a coffin. Because they knew in this earth they would never see their family again. I'm asking you to give it all. I'm not asking you to give 98%. I'm not asking you to give 99%. I'm asking for 100. Wholly, completely, totally sold out to God. So lift your hands. Now, Lord, put a mark upon us. I include myself. That we will give everything, no matter what it costs. That we will follow you. We will follow you to the ends of the earth. We will go wherever you tell us to go. We will do whatever you ask us to do. We will not be afraid of what people will say. We will not be afraid of controversy. We will not be afraid even to our life like Esther. And Father, I pray that you will anoint men and women tonight 
The Lord is showing me in this room there are some nation shakers. The Lord is showing me there's some world shakers here. Some of you, if you're in retirement, come out of retirement. God is greater than Netflix. Holy Spirit, right now, lift your hands. Now, just come upon us, Lord. Yes, many are being marked by the Lord right now. Holy Spirit, come more, Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let your fire fall upon us. Consume our own desires, our earthly passions. Give us your passions, God. Passion for the lost, passion for reformation, passion for revival, passion to those, see those that abolish the last bits of human trafficking and slavery and racism and poverty and the forces of evil and communism and socialism that want to take over this nation. Those that will be forces against financial terrorism and economic shaking. There's some men, young men and women, God is going to use you on university campuses. Go preach on your campus. Find a corner, find a spot where you can preach the word of God. You don't need a pulpit, you just need a mouth. Open your mouth and he will fill it. I was just talking to a young man um, in, in Washington, D.C. this morning. And he said he went to the Ukraine to fight human trafficking. I said, who sent you? He said, God sent me. 24 years old. He bought a ticket and went over and God showed him who was trafficking. And he's being trafficked. And he said, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds at the border of Ukraine. There was a young woman in our meeting yesterday. God gave her a dream to go to Ukraine. The same thing. And she didn't know. She didn't know anything about trafficking. But she saved many, many people. This is a generation of dreamers. This is a generation that will hear the voice of God and do what he says.